couple weeks ago, I created this build challenge in The Sims 4 where you have to build two completely different houses using the same shell. I just did it previously using different aesthetics and today I want to see if I can do it again using different decades. This is the shell I made for today and it is a tad bit awkward if you stare at it for too long. Like we have this random room up top and then the house just gets smaller as you go to the right. But hey, what's done is done. This is what we're going to be working with today. And this time we are going to be using the wheel today. This is a wheel of decades from the 1920s all the way up to today. And we're going to spin to see which one will be the inspiration for each house. So let's go ahead and spin for the first one. And we're doing 1980s. So in the 1980s, we saw popular exterior trends like contemporary style houses, neutral stucco and siding, mixes of different types of windows. And of course it was the 80s. So we saw tons of colorful doors and fun colorful outdoor details. So I think those contemporary style homes are going to be my inspiration for this. This is a style that I don't build in too normally, but I find the roofing on these very interesting. Like it's a lot of the forward facing roof slopes. So I'm gonna just try and mimic that. I'm basically copying and pasting the same half gabled roof piece and just bringing it over so we have the same angle, but I think I'm gonna adjust the lengths of all of them. So like some of them will only come until here and then I'm gonna copy and paste the same one right behind that. And then later on for these roofing bits, we can go in with these windows. So it's gonna be a cool feature from the front. We can also do something similar in the back. I'm just gonna take these windows and we're gonna line them up so they're visible here from the back. And then for the front bit here, I'm gonna take another gabled roof piece. I'm gonna shrink it down so it's just going to cover this top part. And then I'm gonna lower the angle down and bring out just one of the adjusters holding shift just so it lines up with that other roofing piece there and it looks like it's connected right at that top part. Again, we'll add our windows. And then I'm thinking over to this side, we just do a regular gabled roof piece and we'll just adjust it to size so it's matching the other angles. I chose a brown trim for the roof. So this is what we've got so far. I think I wanna go in with a brown stucco. I know there's one literally called stuck on you. The fact that I know exactly what this wallpaper is called is concerning, but it's from Jungle Adventure. And I think I'm just gonna put this all over for now. And then I'm thinking about combining that with a brown siding. So what if we tried this one from base game? I'll just bring it to half of the house. The other half can be stucco. And then over here, I wanted to make a garage that won't really be a garage, but it's gonna look like one from the outside. And lately I've been loving using this book nook kit wallpaper for garages. We'll add a big window here for my garage. And then for the main windows, I was thinking about these ones here from base game. We'll add a couple right at the front. So far, a lot of this is base game actually. The only thing that isn't is my roof paint from Horse Ranch. I think I'm just gonna use a lot of the same windows like along the back. I can use my same garage ones here. We're gonna raise it up on a foundation and we'll keep with a similar stucco looking foundation. I'm bringing out a base game fence for my entryway. We'll add our stairs. I love when there's a matching railing. It's really the small things, isn't it? And then I think in the back, I'm also going to build a deck using the exact same fence. I'm just building out a little space, like a patio for the backyard. And I think I want to give these houses a pool. So when we build the other house, I'm going to try and keep things in general in the same location that I'm placing it in. So like the pool will be in the same spot. All our bedrooms and like the house of the layout on the interior will be the same. So whatever we get later on, they're also getting a pool. I haven't picked any doors yet. I saw a lot of arches happening. So I do think I'm going to use this base game one here. But then for the front door, I feel like doors are so important. Do you guys understand where I'm coming from? I've always had this fascination for doors. One time I had a photography project and I literally had to go around just taking pictures of people's doors and I loved it. They're just so important. They make a statement. I feel like it's one of the first things you see when you look at somebody's house. Maybe I'm weird. I don't. Well, I definitely know I'm weird. Anyway, I'm going to be using this roofing trick here to make a driveway. It won't be functional, obviously we have nothing to drive on it. But basically you just add a half gabled roof piece, same as I used on the roofing. You hold shift and bring out this adjuster all the way so it's hitting the floor. And then I'm just gonna bring it forward so it's attaching onto the house. I like to use this gravel here for my driveway because I know we have a matching one. And then I just like to hide those edges of the roof with a hedge just to make it not look so much like a roof piece. So, so far this is what we got. I need to add some details though. And since I used the horse ranch roof paint, I think I'm gonna 
use the same horse ranch awnings. And for some reason, I want to add a satellite dish. So I'm gonna stick that on there. This is from Strangerville. We're gonna go find a car from Debug for our driveway. I think we're just gonna add this base game one. Something about adding a car in the driveway makes it look so much more realistic. Like someone's home here, you know? And then in the back, I don't know why, but when I picture an 80s backyard, it's always in the summertime. I want like the plastic furniture. I'm using these chairs from For Rent. I also love to use these plastic base game loungers. We really need some landscaping back here. I am definitely going to be doing that. Don't worry. But I'm going to add a barbecue, maybe some bicycles hanging around. And I was picturing a sprinkler. We have sprinklers in The Sims 4 Seasons, which I always forget about these. They obviously function as like sprinklers, but Sims can also run through them and play with them to cool off during hot temperatures. And I don't know why, but something about that is perfect for this house to me. All right, so here is our 80s contemporary house exterior all finished. I really love how this turned out. I love the roofing. I love the color palette on it. I was a little nervous adding so many roofing pieces before, but I really like how that turned out. This is how it turned out in the back. I extended this area a little more. We have our sprinklers here ready to run through. I also added a water balloon basket over there and I added some towels here with some more like bold flower patterns. This whole backyard is giving summertime and I am so ready for this. I have also made a layout for the interior that we're gonna do. So our front entry is right here. This is going to be our living room. We're gonna have a kitchen here in the back, a bedroom over to the right and a bathroom. And then upstairs, I might make this like an attic or a hobby room. It could be converted to a bedroom for someone else, but I really wanna focus on a hobby room upstairs. And of course, this is gonna be the layout that we're keeping for the next house too. So popular 1980s trends for the interiors were tons of prints, including planty prints, bold prints, florals were very popular. We saw loud colors, brass accents, glass furniture, ruffles, neon, of course, and a luxe maximalism interior style was also very popular. So I think for the interior, I'm going to do a brown wood and I'm gonna bring that into the bedroom and possibly upstairs. I feel that we should definitely be using a wallpaper, particularly one with a print on it. I could definitely see this base game one working. That could make for a very cute kitchen. I actually really like this wallpaper. We definitely might change this, but I'm gonna try and go with this pink for now. We need to add some doors. And I think I'm gonna aim for like that preppy floral sort of feel for my living room. And one chair in particular stood out to me for that. And it's this cottage living floral chair. I'm gonna have to find a couch that matches this because it's too perfect not to use. I was really hoping that this cats and dogs one could work. Like this, if it had a lot of patterns on it, would be perfect. There's also this green one. It has the ruffles at the bottom. I might try this. I was definitely thinking about this leaf print rug from For Rent. I think I'm going to lean into like the leafy patterns in the bedroom. So I'll bring that in there for now. But in here, what about this growing together rug? There are definitely some floral prints in here we could use. And now that I'm looking at it, this Discover University couch also looks good. All right, we'll leave that for now. And then for my coffee table, I saw a lot of glass furniture. So let's try this one from Decor to the Max. I want to try and keep with the electronics that would have been present in this era. So I'm going to go with this TV. I feel like they would have been a lot bulkier, but obviously I don't really have that. I'm going to use a brass end table here. I also want to change my lighting so it's a little bit warmer. I want to add a big plant back here and let's get those layered ruffly curtains. Cats and Dogs has these ones and these are actually great because underneath you can add another curtain so we can really get that layered look. I was thinking about adding these from base game and shrinking them so they're right under underneath. Like we do not do curtains like this anymore. These are so <laughs> extravagant. I'm thinking about adding a big clock over here. I also like this one a lot. So I'm going to put this in my kitchen. I'm adding a record player. This one in particular reminds me more of 70s decor, but maybe they bought it in the 70s, love to listen to it and they kept it. I'm adding these pictures above. I want to add these sconces. And then also these are technically, I think, dining tables from Dine Out, but I saw a lot of tables 
table cloths happening on end tables. I saw a lot of ruffles, a lot of lace happening over the tables. I also saw a lot of tropical plants, like particularly these ones with the big leaves. We could probably also use more rugs. I feel like we definitely could have also used this here from the basement kit. I wish this was a functional TV. I hate how it's just technically a table. So we could bring that upstairs into the hobby room. And for some reason, I think it would really suit up here if we gave it a carpet. When I was house hunting a couple months ago, I cannot even begin to tell you how much old carpet I saw in some of the houses. We actually ended up buying a house from the 80s and it has so much carpet downstairs. I'm sure we'll probably replace it eventually, but our little attic up here is getting the carpet treatment. What should I put up here? Let me Google. Most popular hobbies in the 80s. Movie night, going to the movies, fun. Aerobics slash dance party. We could do a dance party upstairs with like a yoga mat and the little weights and basketball. Okay, we've got a basketball. I think we need a stand up mirror. Oh, and how fun would it be if they were watching workout videos on the TV that doesn't work? Maybe they got a new TV and just placed it right on top of the old console one. Whatever, okay, yoga mat, preferably one with a really bold pattern on it. That one is good. Then we can go into the clutter pack and we can add some of the gym clutter. Like we've got these shoes that ties in with a basketball. We could even add, and maybe that looks a little too modern. Well, okay, we'll add the gym equipment, nice and vibrant. I was thinking about this here with the little weights. We could potentially add a shelf for storage like this one from high school years. I was picturing something more dark like this one. <laughs> this is technically a china cabinet though, but like this is the vibe. So our gym equipment is going in the china cabinet. Oh, you know what else from the basement kit? This phone. Oh, the phone is so perfect. I'm gonna put one in the bedroom too. Just right in there so we don't forget. I think up here we could also put some board games so I can stack that on top of this cabinet. I'm adding some boxes. And what about a games table? The Jenga table. This is technically called Don't Wake the Llama from Get Together, but you get it and it's perfect for the 80s. I think if I put it here, Sims could technically still walk around and walk around the back so they could still get there. But I'm loving the cluttered 80s mess we've got going on up here. We could also add some movie posters and we definitely need a neon light somewhere. I'm thinking we put it in our attic. So this is how our hobby attic turned out. There's actually a lot to do up here. We've got our yoga mat. You can even watch TV. We have all our nostalgic clutter upstairs and then the game table, of course. I try to keep this wall fairly empty just to make sure Sims can get around to that other chair. And I completely abandoned our living room downstairs, but I finished that too. So this is how our 80s living room turned out. I really like the florals. I like the preppiness to it. Those curtains are really giving it the most 80s aesthetic, I think. And then over to this side, we have our record player and I just added some clothing racks there too. All right, next we should go and do the kitchen, which I've been slowly bringing things in here. And I feel like 80s kitchens just had a lot going on on the walls. I do still need some flooring. I was thinking some tile, possibly this. And our counters are just going to be oak like these from base game. I want to put these all the way around this wall. And then I also want to bring out an island. We're doing the full deal with the cabinets and everything. I'm wrapping these base game ones all the way along the wall as well. And I'm going to replace my window so it's right in between that gap. Our fridge will be here. Our oven. I might use this one from City Living. Chairs I'll use from Cats and Dogs. And we'll just add our sink right under the window. For my curtains, I'm probably going to layer them again, but I'm using these ones from Growing Together pretty much along every window. Then over here for the dining table, I again want to use a tablecloth. I almost wish this one had a pattern on it. There are the floral ones from Cottage Living and actually the cats and dogs chairs almost match. I'm using a base game rug underneath. I could definitely see a hutch. I'm definitely getting the feeling that this is an older sim that lives here, but the upstairs hobbies gave a younger vibe. So I think it would be really cute if this was maybe an older lady who lives alone, but she holds on to her youth by playing 
Jenga and doing her aerobics upstairs. And maybe she's also part of a class. This kitchen turned out so adorable. It's so welcoming. It honestly reminds me of my grandma's kitchen who had a very 80s sense of style. This is how the dining room turned out. We've definitely got enough room to have family over. We still have to do the bathroom, which I'm just realizing now these are coming through my bathroom. And I wouldn't mind using a similar tile in here that I used in the kitchen. And one thing I saw a lot of was the colorful plumbing appliances, like the pink sinks, the pink bathtub, or even yellow, like these. All of these colors are perfect for what I'm going for. Same as this bathtub, like I swear everything came in just a matching set. So let's do yellow bathtub, yellow toilet. I don't think I would mind to have a pink bathtub. I'm just saying. I'm adding this pink chandelier. I actually want to bring this into my bedroom as well. We'll do a pink robe on the door. We'll do a patterned bath mat. I added a towel rack over there and I think this is going to be our bathroom. And now for the bedroom. What if we did this one? This is totally that 80s bold print I was talking about. And let's find a bed. I saw a lot of the iron headboards for 80s bedrooms. So we could try this one. This is pattern on pattern. And then we do the nightstands with the ruffles. And I really wanted to put my phone right next to the bed. We'll add a lamp. I liked how that stand up mirror looked in the attic. So we'll bring one of those in. What about for a dresser? The fact that we went for an older 80s aesthetic, we didn't really have a lot of neon in this build. However, I've done decades builds in the past, which really focused on the neon. I'm gonna bring a little in here. I knew that because I had done that before, I wanted to do something a little different. I think a vanity could be nice in this room. Like we have this worn one from Vintage Glamour. I'm adding this chair from Cats and Dogs. I also wanted to add some perfume and makeup on the vanity. And then this is a pretty big bedroom. I think I could fit a seating area on this side. I actually might go even crazier with the bold rugs in this room. And the more I've been building here, the more I feel like this is such an extra person. Like she really has a whole living room in her bedroom. This is actually so adorable. I love how unique this whole build turned out. Totally outside my comfort zone, but at the same time, like everything about this makes sense of why I would like it. The patterns, the colors. This specific style was just so soft. Very cute. I'm happy we got to do an 80s house. All right, so now take a good look at where we placed everything, the layout. And now let's go back to the wheel and see which decade we are jumping to from this one. All right, spinning for the next decade and we're doing the 50s. Oh, we got some good ones today. All right, all of this is going. The roofing, everything except for the shell must go. This is extremely satisfying, I must say. So in the 1950s, we saw popular exterior trends like ranch style homes, kitschy, pastel, and optimistic color palettes. We also saw rich brown tones, a lot of siding, and big blocky brick. So we are right back where we started the shell is exactly the same. I did keep the driveway there though, just so we don't have to add it again. And I already changed my foundation paint. So this time we're gonna go for more of a ranchy exterior. I'm gonna add on a gabled roof piece right on top and bring it across. No matter what we do, this is gonna look so different because that roofing on the 80s home was so drastic. Like you can already tell this house is gonna look so different. The principle is pretty much the same though. I'm taking the exact same roofing we did, keeping the same angle and just adjusting it on to the rest of the house. Although on this side, I'm going to add a half-hipped roof and we'll just bring that across to the end. This roofing is much more simple, much more classic looking. I'm using a scalloped roof paint from Base Game. And for our wallpaper for the outside, I was thinking about using one of the Base Game siding and brick combinations. I like the look of this one. And then Base Game also has the matching siding so we can put that on like the top roof part, maybe along the side too. And I'm using my same book nook wallpaper for the garage. I wanted to use a base game fence coming along for the front entry. So I'm just gonna bring that out like that. I'm using some base game flooring leading up and I think I'll bring that all the way to the sidewalk. I'm using the same base game windows for my garage, but I'm gonna stack them this time. And for my door, I think I wanna do red. Red is a very prominent color in a lot of 50s decor. We're gonna see it on the inside. So I think it'll be okay if we put it at the front. And Get Famous also has these windows we could use has the red and the white mixed in. Oh, actually Growing Together has a similar color palette there with their windows. So I'm gonna use that one up top. I'm also using these red 
red and white awnings. Screw it. We never get to use these. And then we could use one of these big window boxes here too. Oh, it's looking so cute already. I also saw a lot of these popping up in 50s exteriors. These are from Cats and Dogs. I might make mine a little bit smaller. And then I also wanted to put a brick chimney along the side. I've done some more landscaping at the front. How perfect is this car in the driveway? And then this time in the back, I want to have a similar aesthetic. Like we'll add the barbecue. I also wanted to add this umbrella from Get Together. And we're going to see a lot of this pale, almost pastel green color. So I'm going to use that for my chairs. And with all the landscaping done, this is what the outside of our 50s house turned out like. This one feels so charming. It's welcoming in a very different way than the other one. Like the inside of this house is going to be fun. I love all the little details on it, like the shutters, even the backyard just looks so cute. We of course have our pool. I added some more details along the back patio. And again, compared to the 80s one, this is totally different with the same shell. Okay, let's go inside and let me show you the flooring and wallpaper that I picked for this. Look how fun our color scheme and everything is going to be. I cannot wait to do that kitchen. This wallpaper I used is actually from high school years. All of the pastels are base game and I did bring in some wooden paneling again from the book nook kit. So for 1950s interior trends, again, we saw a lot of pastels, that kitschy color scheme, pink, patterns like stripes, checkers, and polka dots, boomerang patterns, atomic graphics, and space age inspiration. So we're going to put everything again in the same location. And I saw a lot of this like red tone brown. So I'm using this coffee table here from Get Famous. I again need a really old TV. So I'm going to use this one again from the basement kit. I might move this over slightly so it's just up against that wall there. For my chairs, I was actually thinking about using these from Growing Together. I like how it has that red brown underneath that I was talking about with the pink. And there are two packs that I think are going to thrive here. Get Famous and we have Bowling Night. Bowling Night has a lot of this older vintage decor, like this clock we can totally use. Even some of the bowling shelves, like maybe we can build this for a bowler. I know bowling was a popular hobby in the 50s. I might even bring in some of the decor into the bedroom. Like we have this sign. Also this, which is meant for the outside. But if I can make this work in the bedroom somehow, I'm doing it. There's also a bowling cabinet. Yeah, okay. This person is going to be a bowler. Which by the way, speaking of bowling, I swear bowling when you're over the age of like, let's say 27 is an extreme sport. I went the other day, like last week, and I swear my entire arm was injured for like days. Especially when you're playing 10 pin, like you are hurling 10 pounds all the way down that lane. I literally played one game and I was out for the rest of the day. So for our desk, obviously I'm not adding a computer, but I did add a book. I wanted to add a clock. We had one in the other house. So let's use this one with this different shape. Oh, and we need a jukebox. I also saw a lot of lamps that look like this and they match my color scheme. And I think for our sconces, we can use these ones from base game. And for my curtains this time, I know that Cats and Dogs has like this specific shade of pink and I feel like it's just perfect for this build. I'm using a Get Famous bookshelf in this corner, a bowling night ottoman. And for the pictures, I was using these ones from Strangerville. I actually looked up what some of the hobbies were in the 50s again. And I saw a lot of them were collecting like model cars and model airplanes, which I know we've got quite a few of those in build mode. So I'm going to add a few of those around. So, so far here is our 50s living room. I added this little speaker on my table over there, which I thought was perfect. Our jukebox, we've got our bowling display, our chair over here. And I just added a couple more pictures on the wall as well. Since I did add my jukebox already upstairs, I'm going to go up and start working on our attic. And I don't really want to use these in my dining room downstairs, but I did want to include these from Dine Out. These are giving the 50s diner aesthetic. And since I'm trying to keep it similar, I'm going to add a games table up here as well. We're going to use this red one from Growing Together, some pink chairs from Dream Home Decorator. And I think I want to use one of these clocks from Vintage Glamour. Oh, Get Famous has these classic movie keepsakes and hidden in these swatches is an Elvis costume. We can still add boxes and clutter in here like we did in the 80s one. I also wanted to put some guitars in this room, maybe like these ones from Horse Ranch. We're adding this Get Famous corner piece and there we have our 50s inspired attic. Not as much going on in here as we had in the 80s one. I am going for a little bit more of a simpler look, but still lots to do, lots of skill items for our sims. Okay, let's go down and do the kitchen next. I'm so excited to make this wallpaper work. So kitchens 
in the 50s were colorful. I love everything about these kitchens. We're still gonna do an island just like we did in the last one, but this time we're going to add a divider. So this is from City Living and I've shrunk it down. I'm gonna add it right into this corner of the island and then I'm gonna shrink it down again and raise them up on top of each other. So for now, this is our divider and then I'm going to add my fridge. I wanna use the pink one from Cottage Living with the matching pink oven. We're going all the way along the top again with the matching cabinets. I'll use the same sink from the other house. And then for the rest of the decor, I want to bring in that red. So we'll do red bar chairs, red rug, and majority of the clutter that we use is also going to be red. And then for my dining table, I know that Eco Lifestyle Debug has these tables and also these chairs. And I feel like these are so perfect for our 50s dining room. I didn't end up using this table in the other room, so I'm going to bring that here. I am so obsessed with how this turned out. I think kitchens from the 50s have to be my favorite decade, but I added this microwave oven from Dream Home Decorator. We've got all of our red decor. I also added some of those plates on the wall that we had from the other build. And then coming over this way, I added some neon signs there. We've got our wine picture and we have our dining table. And next going over to the bathroom, we're again gonna be seeing the colorful plumbing. I'm going to use this sink from Get Famous and the toilet. This time I wanna go with this classic greeny blue color. There is also the matching bathtub, but I was thinking about using this one actually. It has the matching shower curtain color. We're going to use a mirror from Get Famous. I thought this base game picture matched our color scheme really well. We'll do pink towels, added a pink bath mat and robe, and this is going to be our 50s bathroom. I wonder if slash when the colorful plumbing will make a comeback. And finally, let's go do our 50s bedroom. I'm gonna use those cats and dogs curtains in here again. We'll put our bed in the same spot and I think I'm actually gonna use the same one, but in blue. I am bringing my bowling stuff back in here. We are definitely including this. And I feel like this won't look weird. So we're gonna keep that in the corner. Get Famous has some dressers. I think I wanna go a little lighter in this one. So I'm gonna go with this swatch. And they also have an end table that I think I could use. I still wanna do the vanity and we'll do like the whole living room on the other side. We could probably get away with the same vanity and potentially even the same chair, but different swatch. I'm gonna use this lamp from Cats and Dogs in the corner. Going again with Cats and Dogs, I was very close to using these in my living room just because they have that exact color I'm going for. And you know what? Let's bring in the matching couch on this side. There is another Get Famous coffee table that I haven't used yet. And the bedroom is where we can definitely add in more of our model airplanes and cars. And with everything done, this is what our bedroom turned out like for the 50s. I added more bowling clutter like that trophy there despite my newfound bowling hatred. I also added a shelf over here, which is where I put some of that space age decor I was talking about, as well as a bowling pin and a car. Then over here, I kept it simple. We've got a couch, some more layered curtains, some more decor, and I think that wraps up this build challenge. I'm having a very hard time picking my favorite today. I love them both for very different reasons. This one is totally more fun with all the colors and everything, but the other one was so classic and warm. I don't know. Let me know which one you guys like the best today. And I'm totally Totally loving this challenge where we take the one shell and do two different homes. I'm definitely going to be doing more of these in the future, so let me know what comparisons you guys would like to see. As you can imagine, doing two houses in one video does take a while despite the editing. So if you guys like the video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.